Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone, based on the time zone. Thanks for joining today's session. Myself, Gigi Jaising. I have been working in Salesforce for over 11 years now and have worked on almost all the major areas of Salesforce, like Sales Cloud, Service Cloud, Einstein, Integration, Aura, Salesforce DX, etc. I'm an ATEX certified application architect and I'm one of the co lead for Women in Tech Group, Kochi. You can reach me in Twitter and LinkedIn. Here we have the sponsors for the event. I would like to thank all our sponsors for sponsorship and the support provided to the event. Today's topic is about org shape for Scratch org. We will be covering the following topics in this session. Basics of Salesforce DX, basics of Scratch org definition, the tricky part during Scratch org creation, solution for it, basics of org shape, steps to enable, create, and manage org shape, Scratch org definition for org shape, and the limitations. As this is related to Salesforce DX, let us first discuss the basics of DX and Scratch org. Salesforce DX, also called the Salesforce Developer Experience, is a set of tools that streamlines the entire development lifecycle. It improves team development and collaboration, facilitates automated testing and continuous integration. This makes the release cycle more efficient and agile. Salesforce DX is a Salesforce product in the app cloud that allows users to develop and manage Salesforce apps throughout the entire platform in a more direct and efficient way. Salesforce DX is primarily used by developers and it allows users to have true version control. In general, the development model can be of two types, traditional org-based development or the latest scratch org-based development. In more details, org-based development model works with orgs that don't have source tracking, such as sandboxes, developer edition orgs, or the trail hut playgrounds. With this development model, you must track changes manually and deploy sets of changes to sandboxes and then to your production org. This development model is mostly suitable for the projects which have lots of post-deployment activities or on apps that have not moved to Salesforce DX. Now coming to the Scratch Org driven development, the development will be done using Scratch Orgs. We will discuss more about the Scratch Orgs in the upcoming slides. It encourages the complete source driven development, which helps in continuous integration as the Scratch Orgs are designed to track changes between the local and Scratch Org. This development model is suitable for applications that has less post installed configurations. Now coming to the details of the Scratch Orgs, Salesforce DX introduces a new type of Salesforce environment called Scratch Orgs. These are the orgs consisting of Salesforce code out metadata that can be easily created or destroyed, helping to speed up the standard development workflow. It's a standalone development org that has a maximum lifespan of 30 days. It is created using a dev hub and it consumes a Scratch Org license in the dev hub org. In simple terms, a Scratch Org is a disposable environment in Salesforce that developers can use to develop and test their code and different features prior to their implementations. Scratch Orgs are customizable and capable of imitating various editions of Salesforce. This will boost the productivity of the developers along with enabling enhanced development, automated testing, and integration. Now we will just compare Scratch Org with sandboxes. Definitely, Scratch Org is not a replacement for Sandbox. Scratch Org is a source-driven and disposable development environment. Sandbox is a copy of production. Scratch Org is not permanent, and they don't include any production data. Maximum lifespan is 30 days, and the default is 7 days. Sandboxes don't expire unless manually recycled. Scratch Orgs are used for feature build, peer review, DevOps automation, etc. whereas sandboxes are critical for staging, performance, testing, UAT, SIT, and trainings. The edition license and settings of a Scratch Org is based on its configuration file, but in sandbox, it will be same as that in production. Now comes the tricky part during the Scratch Org creation. A big deal of preparation is required as you build the Scratch Org. 
in essence, you need to deal with many configurations so that the scratch org will have the identical settings, features, and licenses. That is the shape of the org reflecting the original org that you are using as a source. As you might have already guessed, configuring a scratch org as you create it is quite a dreary process. Copying all the setups implies a lot of time, effort, and attention to details. Not to mention the continuous necessity to monitor that everything is up to date. And the worst part is that when a code is developed and transferred between orgs, this often leads to conflict in files and metadata, which is obviously bad. Fortunately, in 2021, Salesforce Windows release brought an amazing news. A solution that can make the lives of developers much easier, as now they can quickly create shape orgs without all the painstaking works with configurations. Let's give a warm welcome to the org shape solution. The org shape mimic the baseline setup, that is the addition, feature, license, and settings of the source org without extraneous data and metadata. If the feature settings or the license of that org changes, you can capture those updates by recreating the org shape. It is available in developer, group, professional, and enterprise editions, but it is not available in scratch orgs and sandboxes. It allows you to create a scratch org on the basis of production org. This regards large scale settings such as enabled features, but not the chords, triggers, etc. Now we will check why we need org shape for scratch org creation. Org shape simplifies the process of scratch org creation. Manual configuration activities are not needed anymore as the org shape mimics everything from the source. Assume that you want to create a scratch org with certain features enabled. You might be thinking, we do have a feature option available in the configuration file for that. Then what is the need of org shape? Well, sometimes not all the features can be available in the feature section. There are some features Salesforce will enable when you reach out to them via Salesforce support case. Those are some situations you can use org shape. Also, when you want exact features, settings, limits, and licenses of the production org, you can use the org shape. The main purpose of the org shape is to simplify the creation of scratch orgs that will support an entire replica of production. Org shape includes the source org in terms of addition, that is the addition of the source org. The addition will decide which feature you get out of the box. In addition to that, it also includes the feature licenses which provides the ability to specify additional add-on functionalities that can be supported in the edition. Along with that, it also includes the settings like user licenses, permission set licenses, organization's permissions, organization preferences, and organization values. But the data and metadata are not included. A Salesforce admin for the DevHub org must assign permissions to the users who plan to create org shapes or create scratch orgs based on the org shape. If you already have a permission set for Salesforce DX users, you can update it to include the access. The main permission needed to create or manage org shape and scratch orgs are the create, edit, and delete permission on the shape representation object, where the scratch org details are stored. Shape representation object contains information about shape of an org, which includes features, settings, licenses, and limit information. This object is available in API version 50 and later. To get into the object details, we can go through the fields and its data types. Description field is a text field which can hold the description of the org shape as defined in the SFDX command we ran while creating the org shape. Edition holds the edition of the source org we used to create the org shape. This is a text field. Feature is a text area field that can store the add-on features present in the org referred to by this org shape. Last reference date is a date time field used to store the date when the org shape is last referenced. Last view date is again a date time field used to store the date when the org shape was last viewed. Name is the text field that stores the alias of the org shape that we have mentioned in the SFTX command we ran while creating the org shape. Settings is again a text area. It holds the settings of the org referred to by this org shape. Finally, the status field is the pick list field that shows the status of the org shape. The possible values are active, error, in progress, inactive, and new. 
we can start using an org shape when its status is active. All these fields are read only to the users except the description and the name field, which can be updated during the scratch or creation. All the other details will be automatically fetched from the source or from which the org shape is created. The shape representation object supports the following method calls. That is, create, delete, describe layout, describe as object, get deleted, get updated, query, retrieve, undelete, update, and absurd. In addition to providing users with appropriate permission, be sure to assign the Salesforce or Salesforce platform license to the org shape users. Other user licenses aren't supported at this time. Before we jump on using org shape to create Scratch Org, let us understand some more features platform offers. A dev hub is nothing but the production org that is enabled to create Scratch Orgs. A dev hub can be enabled through configuration. Go to setup, enter dev hub, click dev hub under the development section, enable the option, enable dev hub, and your dev hub org is ready to use. Please be noted that once you enable this feature, you can't disable it. We need to understand the source org. Source org is a production or packaging org whose feature, license, user licenses, permissions, and preferences need to be replicated in a scratch org. It can be enabled in a different org from a dev hub org, but the dev hub need to be authorized to access the shape from the source org. You can also note that your org can be a dev hub and a source org at the same time. To clarify things a little bit more, assume that you have two orgs, org one and org two. In org one, you have enabled the dev hub option and you can create scratch orgs using org one. If you want to create scratch orgs using the org two's metadata, then you need to enter the 15 digit dev hub org ID under the allow a dev hub org to create the scratch orgs using this org shape option in the org shape. Enter each 15 character dev hub org ID on a separate line. A maximum of 50 dev hub orgs can be specified in this section of org2. This way, org2 will hold the power. So using a dev hub org and the source org, we will be able to create scratch orgs that will hold the feature, licenses, and settings as we need for the project. Now we can check the steps to enable org shape. Enabling the org shape is very easy. Go to setup, enter org shape, click org shape under development section, Enable the option, enable org shape for scratch orgs. That's it. You are ready to use your org shape. Let's check how we create org shape and use it for scratch or creation using Visual Studio Code. As a prerequisite, we need to authorize our dev hub org and the source org using Visual Studio Code. We need to run a simple command for this, like sfdx auth web login set alias my prod or my dev. This will take to our Salesforce login page where we need to enter our org's username and password and allow CLI to access the org. A success message will be displayed once the org is authorized. Once we authorize the org, we can create the org shape by running a simple command in the Visual Studio Code. The command would be like sfdx force org shape create hyphen u, the username for the org for which we need to create the org shape. Once the org shape is created successfully, it will show a success message. This command is executed asynchronously. To monitor the status, we need to run another command in the Visual Studio Code, and the command would be like sfdx force org shape list. This will give a sample response like this, where we will be able to see the status of the org shape creation along with the other details regarding the org. Once the status is changed, we can use this org shape for the scratch of creation. To delete the org shape of an org, we can run a simple command in Visual Studio Code. The command would be like sfdx force org shape delete. It will ask for a confirmation message. Once we confirm, the org shape will be deleted and a success message is shown in the response. Now, coming to the scratch of definition files in general, the project definition JSON file for scratch or creation looked like this. We need to configure the edition, feature, license, and settings that need to be present in the scratch orgs manually. 
To explain a bit more, if you want to create a scratch org with required features and settings, we need to manually define the project definition file with the required details. We need to make sure that we have activated exactly the same feature and setting that we have turned on in our production org. For example, if you want to work with communities, you would like to create a scratch definition file that looked like this. It includes the org name, edition, then under the features, we need to mention the community's keyword to enable the community. We need to configure the settings related to community under the settings section. For example, we have combined the enable network enable settings related to the community's feature in this JSON file. Seems easy, right? Well, it is if you know that you need to combine the community's feature to the enable network enable settings. While setting up your scratch org with community enabled, you will then notice that you don't have any community license. So you may need to edit the project JSON file again to include the license setting. This can be easily done if you know about the dependent features and settings related to community. But in real life, you are more likely to encounter with similar kind of issues because there can be many more features or settings that are activated in your production org that you have never heard of. For example, under the feature security settings, we have the following settings that are the password policies, session settings, network access control, etc. Also, Salesforce support 100 plus settings related to multiple features, and it is hard to a developer to understand all the settings and its parent features. You will find solution and workaround for almost all your problems, but at the cost of hours of work. But because of the lack of an API for all the features and the link between the features and the settings, this is very far from being perfect. And at the end of your scratch of definition file journey, you may end up with commonly faced issue settings or features that don't have an API. This is painful because this will prevent you from pushing the configuration to the scratch org. Either you may end up retrieving the configuration file that was part of the scratch org, but not part of your production org to support things. Or you will omit these configurations from your repository and manually activate the features after scratch org creation. We may script the configuration file with the tool also, but that can be costly and fragile. This explains the painstaking work with configurations that the developer need to do. That takes a lot of time, effort, and attention to details. But when we are using org shape for the scratch or creation, the project definition JSON file will be like this. Source org will take care of the edition, license, limits, and settings of the scratch org. There is no point in mentioning the edition in the JSON file separately. Features are additive in nature. You can include some more features which is not present in the source org metadata. You can't remove the features that is already present in the source org. The settings will override, but in case if you want them, you can enable or disable them once a scratch org is created. In this way, it makes it easy to create a scratch org using the org shape. Now coming to the limitations of org shape. Of course, org shape has some limitations, it only uses the 15 character ID of the dev hub org rather than the full 18 character org ID. You can have only one active org shape at a time. To summarize, scratch orgs make up a crucial part in the work of Salesforce developers. They are needed for testing new features and code, which is clearly an important ongoing process. As shown in the step by step instructions, it is now actually very easy to create a scratch org using the org shape. And the org shape solution that was introduced by Salesforce in Windows 21 is already an amazing and time saving way to create a scratch org. With that, I conclude my topic. Thanks to the team for giving me an opportunity to present my topic to you all today. Thanks again.